Uh, evening, kids. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time for some doctor news. News from in and around the universe that may or may not affect you on some level that we will not discuss here. Uh, yeah, a lot of weirdness going on online today. Oh, heck. You don't even want me to read what Ian Levine had to say about the Underwater Menace DVD. Let's just say if you run on over his Facebook page, scroll down a bit, and it's not really suitable for younger audience members. It's, oh, man. He totally went off on that thing. Well, okay, let's. I'm gonna. Um, there was a statement put out today by Nick Briggs, but by the time I got home, it was he'd already taken it down. Uh, and luckily, uh, Minnesota Gall- Minnesota Gallifreyan found it for me, and I'm gonna read it for you at the end of this article. So I'll, I don't know where I'll warn you. I don't want you to go. Oh God, I don't want to hear that. But this was a statement put out uh, by Nick Briggs regarding the whole leaking thing. But I'm gonna save that for last. So. Let's get into what we do have. Let's take a look because there's lots, you know, well, not a whole lot of interesting stuff, but here we go. This is what we do have. Okay, first up, over on MCM, uh, t- top things we learned from the Doctor Who panel at MCM London Comic Con. Let's just skip right out here. All right, when asked about the this season's use of two-parters, Moffat said he wants to do things differently, although not all the time. After 10 years of a series, it's important to mix it up and not always have things resolved at the end of the episode. Individual standalone episodes are fine, but it's good to mix things up. Gatus, number two, Gatus was tight-lipped about the, his ninth season episode, Sleep No More, but went on to say it's the first one that is that of his that is set in space, and it's in the 38th century, and it's a found footage episode, and Reese Shearsmith will be appearing, and will as will Space Spectacles. Okay. Um, three, Moffat was very appreciative of the passion of the fans with the Sonic screwdriver. And he mentioned in an online petition calling for a three and statement. We already went over on that because he just goes in the same thing we talked about last night. Okay. Sarah Dollard's episodes face the Raven Riggsy from flatline. We already know is they're returning and it's based on a real, real world, strange thing that struck a chord with her as something the doctor would be involved in. Five, Rachel Talay will be directing the final two episodes. Penultimate one mainly focuses on on the doctor and is a standalone 45 minutes of the doctor talking. She said it's an unusual episode, incredibly complex in ways that can't be explained. and might not, might not, might not be obvious on watching six. Maisie Williams might be back at episode 10. Steve Moffat was Stephen Moffat said, but categorically stated later that she is not the new companion. With regards to Claire's exit, Jenna asked for there not to be a crossover between companions. Um, She has, it's too sad for the old co-lead to work along, be working alongside their replacement. The two partners starting next week will be seen through the eyes of Osgood. Okay. There are some, there was some general discussion on the difficulties of writing for Dr. Who. It's flexibility can make it hard to write said Moffat. And it's easier for writers to become hooed out says Mark Gatiss. Now, Gatiss also reveals that he has a notebook of ideas, which Moffat said is full of the most terrible things. Moffat spoke of the difficulty of the first series for each new doctor, not knowing if they'd be liked, um, that, that they're freer to be themselves by the second. And Peter Capaldi didn't want to play the 12th doctor. He wants to be the doctor, and he isn't that keen on having a costume. He wants to wear whatever the doctor happens to throw on that day. And, of course, there, these are just quick, you know, pick a fan questions. Any chance of Captain Jack returning? And he said only if there's a story, blah, 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 that we'll bring it back. Yeah, we've heard that before. How long will Doctor Who continue? Forever, he said. It's part of a British culture like Robin Hood and Sherlock. And on a more serious note, he inferred the show's immediate future at the BBC is secure for a rosy future. All right. So, oh, my God, they're going to cancel the show. It's over. Yeah, right. And why do they ask this over and over and over again like a stuck record on meth? We've already covered this a billion times. It's like, how many times does Moffat have to address this? It's like, you know, you know how many times you get a wacky across the head with the yes, it can happen stick before it you know, sinks in? I don't know. Okay, Doctor Who Series 9, the Zygon Invasion introduction. And if I remember, this is only like 40-something seconds. But it's, um, once again, uh, I think it's Coleman Capaldi went on, sitting down, you know, telling you, you know, give, you know giving you, a, you know, a little heads up on what, what to expect. No spoilers there. Don't worry about it. 
Okay, Zygon Invasion Publicity. Now, this is the pictures thing again, so if you didn't grab these before, grab them. But this includes a synopsis, which we pretty much already know. But more importantly, if you scroll down here, here's all the air times you need for the episode. You know, well, actually, they've cut a few regions off, to be honest with you. But this will tell you where it's airing, when it's airing, you know, in your area here or whatnot. So here it is. Okay, and by the way, they also included the Zygon Invasion trailer. Okay, next up, the Underwater Menace surface on, surfaces on iTunes. Now, that's why I brought up the Ian Levine thing, because if you go to his Facebook page, oh, my Lord. He went on a rant that would make a sailor blush with shame. Oh, man. All right, the Underwater Menace, the currently last classic Doctor Who story, which was officially released on DVD in the United Kingdom, has also been made available digitally via iTunes. Now, in addition to the story itself, we all, you get, uh, what you call it, uh, the package is rounded off with a photo gallery um, and that has the uh, both parts of the television center of the universe, all this other nifty stuff right here. DVD itself also features commentaries and interviews. Hang on a second. All right. All right, I forgot the documentary fishy tale. My fault. I knew I'd, I skipped over something. The DVD, self, the DVD itself also features commentaries and interviews presented on an alternative audio track, which also includes existing scenes from the two missing episodes that were recovered from Australian censor clips in 1998. The episodes themselves were presented after being restored via the vidfire process, which is not present in the digital versions. And here's a review of the DVD here, and your here's where you can go to purchase it on the Amazon shop. They also have a little competition up if you want to win a copy of the DVD of the Underwater Menace. All right. Lastly for today is Claire starting to dress like the doctor. And they're getting this because, you know, as we've seen, you know, in the filming and whatnot and for this episode, yeah, she's wearing this all black outfit, check the collars and whatnot. Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it? So that's basically what they're saying there. So nothing, nothing big there. Okay, let's get to the nitty-gritty, shall we? Uh, all right, now this was put up on Mark Gatiss's, uh, no, not Mark Gatiss, uh, Nicholas Briggs' Facebook page. Sorry, I mixed names up there. I'm just having this really, i mm, got a headache that's pounding me on the brain. All right, I'm going to read this for you anyway because it's very important. This is what I was talking about last night when I talked about privileged information and how if you, you jump too soon, you can cause problems. And I thought he summed it up here rather well. Let's go through this really, really quick. Quote, just wanted to say that at the point that the leak about the 10th Doctor and Donna adventures occurred, publicly stating this information might have scuppered the whole project. It was a seriously dangerous thing to do in this context. The person who did it is mistaken in their belief that they offered us the chance to prevent them from publishing. The emails I received, when he adds here, my email address had curly, curly, blah, 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 clearly been procured via a third party as I had never shared my email address with this person. As far as I'm aware stated rather bluntly that they were going to publish and simply invited me to comment. When I indicated that I didn't know for certain that it was going to happen, which was true at that point, I actually said, you know, more than I do. The request for a quote to accompany the publishing of the story was simply repeated. If they had offered <laughs> to hold off publishing, until we could confirm, I would have taken that option. But I was not given that option, and I felt that the wisest course of action was not the comment that if I had said anything else, it might have been quoted publicly against my wishes. I want to reassure anyone who's interested that we really re release news stories as soon as we possibly can. We don't withhold anything unnecessarily. The moment it's 100% certain a project is going ahead, we announce it. Before we announce it, all right, before we announce it, it isn't certain, and announcing it before this time risks the project not happening at all. Now, you see what I mean here? Yeah, if he had jumped too soon on this, and chances are most of it was already recorded anyway by the time the leak came out, but still, you, you screwed the pooch for everybody. You blew a surprise. Yay, yay, good on you. Yeah, you're so brilliant. But the problem is, this was privileged information. Now, back during the 50th anniversary year, and a lot of you who've been with me that long know this, I had stuff sitting on the hard drive that I could not reveal. I, I literally had to sit on it all year because it could have... Oh, my gosh. 
sorry, I thought it was a bird invasion that people could have lost their jobs. Um, so you, you know, that's basically why I hold on to most of it. You know, sources could have been revealed, you know, these people could have gotten in trouble and I was not going to do that. In this case, by doing this, if everything hadn't been signed off yet and all that, it could have screwed the pooch. It could have ended the whole 10th doctor, you know, and you know, 10th doctor adventures could have been flushed down the toilet if this had come out the wrong way because somebody put it out too early. So that's all I got to say on it. And, you know, a lot of people think I'm full of it, but like I said, look, there, there were people, you know, like I said, this year it didn't happen, but there were people who were talking to me over the last couple of series. And a lot of it was stuff I couldn't talk about because they were getting this from people who worked on the show. And, you know, if it was pretty much obvious, if I had said certain things, people would lose their jobs and I was not going to do that to people. Sorry. It's not worth the ego trip of saying, Ooh, they reported it first for someone over on the other side of the planet to wind up on a welfare line or an unemployment section. But okay. That's what Nick Briggs had to say. Uh, that was taken down sometime this afternoon though. It's no longer up there on his Facebook page. But like I said, if you are of older age, and you want to see a true insane rant, go check out the Underwater Menace article over on Ian Levine's Facebook page. <sighs> Man, he just went off on that. Well, okay, guys, until tomorrow, everybody take care. Talk to you the rest of your day. Dr. Freedom out. Have a good one. Sayonara. Sayonara.